Hey guys, um, it's Devin. Welcome back to the channel. I'll set you guys down a second. So, um, I failed you guys. <laughs> um, last video, which uh, should be last video, you saw me. I, I chopped a bunch of stalks. I chopped uh, about 100 and 180 acres of corn stalks, 180 acres of corn stalks, and uh, well, we got two out of the three fields baled already, and uh, I didn't bring you along at all. Um, so here's my issue: uh, baling corn stalks is really stressful. Um, for one, the nodders are constantly keeping you awake. Um, stuff stuff happens, stuff gets in the way. Um, nodders fail, and you're up there, you're fixing. Um, also, happened quite often last year, only a couple times this year, um, I actually plug up um, the center of the baler there's a shear pin I'm going to talk about. Um, you shear that. It takes a lot of work to get everything running again. Um, so that's the other thing. You know, I just. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm paranoid uh, when it comes to that. That as soon as I start filming, stuff breaks uh, kind of thing. You know, um, seemed to happen when I was doing soybean straw that as soon as I set up a time lapse, something quit working and I'd get it working, feel good about it. I'd set up the time lapse, something would break again or quit working. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, we got about 60 acres to do yet, um, which is the farthest. Uh, piece of land that we run so um, I'm not sure when we're gonna do that if you can't tell it is really cold out today I got three sweatshirts on we had a bunch of rain so everything is mud um, which is okay uh, we, we, we needed it um, we got our new seating in so that needed it our, I think the wheat needed a little bit um, but soon as everything's dried out, we will be throwing corn in the ground and uh, potentially maybe going right in with the beans, um, depending on depending on everything else. So, um, anyways, so I'm going to kind of talk about uh, the balers, um, at least this baler, on uh, what I like and don't like about uh, the new Holland balers. So, um, the knotters, the knotters are knotters. I think if you're baling corn stalks, no matter what type of baler you have, you're going to have your issues with the knotters. Um, half the time I go up there, um, something isn't what quite working right. I, I can tell uh, right from the seat, even if the screen doesn't say anything, I can tell um, there's four flags up on top which uh, kind of indicate you know if you have a problem and uh, I can usually tell by watching those if there's a problem uh, even before the screen tells me that's just you know experience I guess half the time I go up there and find corn stalks wedged in the knotters I've even found strings tied around corn stalks so sometimes you can't uh, you can't help that kind of stuff. Corn stalks are just, um, they're hard to bale. Uh, even, even bean straw, it's just, it's hard to bale. It's hard on the balers, but, um, it's what I got. And people, there's a lot of people that really like the square bales of corn stalks. So, um, yeah. So anyways, the knotters, they're going to give you trouble. I think no matter what brand you have, they're going to, have a little bit of trouble with the corn stalks. 
Um, with my other baler, this is the 15. This is the one I've been using the last couple days. It's been working wonderfully. Um, can't really complain about it. You know, the knotters, obviously. The 2017 baler, I think there's some issue with um, dirt and dirt and dust getting um, built up in the something with the twine tension. Now there's there's spring loaded arms, there's gears that the string comes through. You need that string tensioned just perfectly in order to make the knotters work correctly. And I think part of that, part of the problem with the 17 is you get enough dirt and dust in somewhere and it starts, it starts failing. And uh, the one day I had the mechanic out the one day, he went through, blew the entire machine out and it worked perfectly for a day and a half. And then it started doing that again. Well, I blew it out. I looked everything over. I blew it out. I, ha I haven't figured out where that spot is that's um, you know not working correctly uh, so we just kind of went ahead like okay we'll, we'll finish up with the 15 clean out the 17 which I got to do yet and uh, we'll go from there so uh, anyways I was talking about a shear pin in here so this is what I call the stuffer um, so you're, this is going to kind of be in a how-to explanation of how the baler works. How about that? So obviously you got the head here. You got a bunch of sets of teeth. They go around real fast, pick up the material, throw it inside. Um, this baler is a packer cutter model. Um, both of my balers are the same. There's a bunch of points and uh, teeth in there that kind of they grab the material and pull it up into the baler. There's a bunch of sets of those. Um, they kind of work like this, I guess, in a way. Um, if you can get that for my hand motion. Anyways, those pack it up into this um, frame here. And there you can, this is actually the side of one of those. Um, so it, it brings it in and then it lifts it up. and you know yada 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 I'm not an expert I'm just explaining what I know um, packs it up into this body here um, and so it, it's packing it up in here there's a set of uh, needles I guess there, there's like a sm small needles in here I think there's like four of them or uh, there could be a few more that hold the material in this area um, until it's ready to trip. So there's actually a bunch of, uh, it's like a pressure plate kind of thing going on in here that once there's enough material in here, it'll trip this, which um, does a bunch of stuff um, with well, this rod, it goes up here, does a bunch of stuff, and trips uh, the stuffer. So when uh, the plunger is all the way back, or wherever it needs to be, this will kick up. So this, um, these will push down into the material and push the, uh, the material up into the stuffer, or up into the plunger, uh, where the plunger will take the material and pack it into the bale. Um, so as I was saying, his fingers in here. Once this trips, um, and I think it even once it starts to move, those fingers will pull out. Um, obviously, the plunger is back out of the way. Um, the idea is when the plunger is going um, back and forth, you don't want any material getting pushed up into the way there. Um, but anyway, so this is a shear pin right here. Um, it just connects two pieces here. Uh, if that shears, this will continue to move, but the, uh, the tines in here won't be 
forced into the material. They're just gonna drag kind of on top. Um, this is my, if I had a guy from New Holland here today, I'd point at this and say, fix that. I absolutely hate this shear bowl. Um, now, doesn't bother at all. It, I've never had an issue with this shear bolt uh, besides with the corn stalks. Um, and when this shears, you're done for an hour at least. You're in here um, in between these slats pounding this stuff out through the head. Um, so pretty much you got a guy on each side here pounding that stuff out. You got a guy crawling in the head, crawling in the head, pulling the material back out. Um, and then, I mean, once you get a bunch out, you stick a pin in, you trip. Basically, you just push this down, it trips. And uh, obviously, once the plunger is back, it'll go. Uh, most of the time you just shear that bolt again and you're back in there uh absolutely hate this design um for the most part it's pretty well the only thing on this baler that i hate um other brands of balers actually have instead of the shear bolt they have like a slip clutch design i believe i'm not i'm not for sure i know like the crones the uh, the cloths, um, I think if these will trip out, if the slip clutch, I don't, I don't think you even call them a slip clutch, but if that trips out, you idle the tractor down and then somehow it, it, it'll force it up in there. Um, just how that works. Um, the other, you know, okay, uh, let's say we don't change the shear bolt make a way this is solid there is no doors in this um there, there's no doors in this all you got is little slats on top um i believe the new holland round balers actually have a door on the bottom that you can drop out and uh, then you could get up under there we could clean that out um, real simple like there's there's no doors there um, if you have a problem you're chipping that out you're pounding it out with a hammer and a bar and uh, or we I mean I've used a sawzall before going up and down the slats in there um, pain in the butt well anyways I've been I was talking to the mechanic about this telling them you know this is a problem we're having um i i don't understand it um when i first started building corn stalks the guys told me fill up the capacity corn stalks are so fluffy that it's gonna um it's gonna fill the capacity but being that they're so fluffy and light you can pack more in there get more done um, well, first year worked fine. I, sh I pretty sure, I think I sheared that once. Um, not really sure, you know, what the deal was. Last year, I probably sheared that bolt probably a dozen times between the two balers. This year, I only did this baler twice. My brother sheared the pin on this one twice. And uh, I think part of the problem was his head was set too low and he was picking up dirt and the dirt was in there. And obviously that's going to cause um, issues. Um, so the other thing, there's actually an adjustment here. This would be your um, slice width control. Um, now there's a spring on here which connects to... Um, this rod which connects down to um, your pressure plate or your trip trip plates 
I don't know what the proper name for those are, but anyways, if you want a larger a larger slice, obviously you tighten this up. Um, you put more pressure on this spring. It takes more pressure to trip the stuffer. If you want a smaller slice, obviously you want less pressure, less material on the stuffer, smaller slice. You want more, um, you need more material in the stuffer to trip the pan, which um, obviously creates a larger slice. So the mechanic said, I, I had this set, these were set, I did not touch these, I was told not to touch these. Um, I had it set, you know, one notch higher. And uh, after my brother sheared the pin twice, I said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna change this. I only took it down one notch, um, which you know, in theory, creates a smaller slice uh, in the bale. Which, honestly, I honest to be honest, I don't care how big the slices are in the bale. Um, you know, a bale's a bale to me. I you know I don't my customers don't don't care. I guess either. Uh, it's betting. Now for hay, yeah, I could see if you're feeding um, a couple slices of hay, you want, you know, a uniform slice. But anyways, I did that, and um, part of my issue, this is just my theory, um, so obviously this can only trip when the, the plunger is all the way back or you know wherever it needs to be for this to kick up uh, obviously you don't want to kick it up when the plungers way back here or you're gonna cause a lot of problems um, my theory is you know I, I go bailing along and uh, say maybe I'm not going quite fast enough and you know this is filling up obviously and the plunger comes back and it starts to go forward that trips well obviously this can't kick up then and you just continue to stuff material in there the plunger takes its you know it goes all the way it comes back and then finally this can kick up and there's a lot of material in there because Obviously, I didn't stop bailing. I'm still running material in there um, that you know it starts to pack in there, and uh, when this finally goes to push it up in there, there's more material in there than you know there should be. So my thought is make that loosen that up, trip this a little bit easier. Um, as you're going along so the idea is this should be tripping this should be pushing material into the plunger every time that plunger is going back and forth so every time that plunger goes um, pushes to the bale you should be pushing material into the plunger and I think the issue was that every time it wasn't pushing material every time it was like say every other time and you know obviously it's got to wait for it to come back if that makes any sense i'm not an expert it's just my thought on it so by loosening that up tripping that a little bit easier i'm able to trip that up you know every time that plunger's coming back i think um to be honest i mean i i bailed a, i bailed 360 bales never sheared that pin and uh, by the end I was just bailing I wasn't you know obviously you keep an eye on it you only you know you want it to push a slice out or you want you know the bale's got to be pushing out every single plunger stroke um, if it starts to seem like it's working a little hard slow down a little bit let this catch up and uh, yeah so that 
that adjustment I made there, uh, I I could be wrong. I mean, you know, sometimes it might depend on the material as well. But I'm really happy with that. Um, I didn't waste any time digging that out. Only thing was uh, messing with the knotters a little bit, which happens, but, um, you know, it is what it is. When I go, we switch over to hay. Um, I will be tightening this up. Uh, again as well so yeah I I guess I apologize guys but I didn't get any footage of the corn stalk failing um, but you guys are probably gonna get sick of me bailing by not too long because <laughs> while well, we got we got 60 acres of corn stalks we're gonna do yet um, I'm not sure when I, I'm thinking we're gonna probably plant everything at home here um, so we bailed up approximately 65 let's say a hundred and let's just say a hundred acres so we bailed up a hundred acres my grandpa was up there right behind us with the chisel plow um, he plowed most most of all of that um, that 60 up there is chopped. All we'd have to do is rake it, bale it, and uh, we could be working ground at the same time and uh, getting out, getting all that done and hopefully getting up there pretty soon and uh, getting everything planted. Um, and that 60, we're, we're putting soybeans on there, so we got a little bit more time. Uh, the others are putting corn in, so we really kind of want to get that in um, sooner than later. Uh, but yeah, so um, like I said, we had some rain, so it's, it's going to be probably a couple days before we're doing too much. Um, kind of, kind of okay with it though. I'm getting my maintenance stuff caught up. Um, I changed the oil in the semi. I got to do the the big T7 yet. Um, we got to hook on the digger. We got to grease that up. And uh, yeah, as soon as it starts to dry, we're it's go time. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, if I get any comments on the last video, we will be answering them. Uh, hopefully. Uh, so ask your questions and uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you next time.